welcome back. So far, we have seen how electrons are generated at the gun and they come via the condenser lens, deflector coils and objective lens and strike on the specimen. Once they strike the specimen, then there will be interaction between electron beam and the specimen. So, in last class we just began to discuss on the interaction between the electron beam and the specimen. So, today we will go more details how electron beam interacts, what happens when electron beam strikes the specimen and what type of signals are generated. And on that regard we have discussed that in our scanning electron microscope primarily we are interested in secondary electrons, backscattered electrons because they gives us topological information with secondary electrons we can get much more topographical or three dimensional image as compared to the backscattered electrons. On the other hand backscattered electrons can give us information about the phase and also the elemental distribution depending upon the atomic number there will be a drastic change in the yield of backscattered electrons and that helps us to know the distribution of heavy uh, atomic number materials and light atomic number elements present in the material. So, when electron beam penetrates into the specimen, uh, it interacts in a region that is called interaction volume. So, once it uh, goes into the specimen, it takes a shape of pier and that is called interaction volume and the region that means that is the region into which electrons penetrates the specimen is called interaction volume. You see here experimentally the shape and size of the inter, uh, interaction volume is determined by taking a polymer sample polymethyl methacrylate. Here a polymethyl methacrylate or PMMA was irradiated with an electron beam at an acceleration voltage of 20 keV. Once electrons beam is irradiated to this polymer sample, electron beam will do the molecular changes or damage to this polymer sample and those damaged part can be dissolved in a Echand solution. So, here uh, after the electron beam irradiation the PMMA sample was dissolved in a Echand solution then photographs are taken microscopic photographs are taken up upon uh, of its cross section. As you see uh, in A here where the electron beam just strikes the sample there that place it will do more mol uh, molecular damage and once you put this PMM sample in the Echand solution quickly that part will dissolve and that takes a almost type of cylindrical shape. And then if we increase the um, duration of putting the PMM sample into the Echand solution slowly slowly it will keep on dissolving more and more amount because the itching rate depends on the uh, duration as more duration uh, for more duration PMMA sample is kept inside the each other solution more and more PMM will dissolve where the molecular damage occurs. So, what you have seen uh, the electrons beam damage occurring in a shape of pier that is in a shape of pier that this, this is called our interaction volume. And as electron beams strikes the sample where it interacts that place it will do more molecular damage and second and then below it it will slowly slowly will keep the will do the less damage because the energy of the electron beam will will become reduced or uh, when it penetrates more deeper into the specimen. So, this is the left side where the experimentally determines the incident uh, electrons energy in the right side you see here uh, the um, Monte Carlo simulation um, uh, graph of the uh, energy of the incident electrons when they uh, penetrate more deeper into the specimen. So, if 
Uh, this is the influence of atomic number on the inter, uh, interaction volume. Uh, we have samples, we can have sample with different atomic number. What you see here as we uh, uh, increase the atomic number uh, in uh, atomic number in the materials, then the interaction volume decreases. So, that means, uh, electrons beam could penetrate less. So, the volume of the interaction volume is decreasing, but the shape remains same the shape of the inter interaction volume remains same that is mostly like a, a pear shape. This is what the, uh, imp this is what the uh, interaction volume as we have uh, um, atomic number of the material increases interaction volume is decreasing, interaction volume is decreasing. This is done at same 20 keV with 0 degree tilt without tilt. This is for carbon, this is for carbon, this is for iron and this is for uh, silver. So, information or signal will come from a smaller area of the sample if we go with a higher atomic number materials. In addition to the atomic number, we also have the beam energy that can also influence the interaction volume. What you see here of a uh, it is iron sample where uh, this is A is our uh, low energy electron beam which is 10 keV and here it is 20 keV and here it is 30 keV. So, as we see the electron beam can penetrate much deeper if we increase the acceleration voltage because the energy of the electrons is becoming higher and higher with increasing the acceleration voltage, but the shape of the inter interaction volume remains same. So, what is more important here also to mention then if the uh, interaction volume is small at a lower uh, acceleration voltage that means information is coming from a smaller area smaller area then we can get much more surface information much more surface information as compared to the electron beam of higher energy that is most important if we want to go for a high resolution photographs a SEM image then we should better choose uh, a lower acceleration voltage during the measurements during the operation. So, that so we can only um, obtain the signals near the surface without going much deeper into the materials. Then uh, the influence of specimen tilt on the interaction volume. So, what you see here uh, as the tilt of the uh, we, we tilt the specimen interaction volume also changes. More the tilt angle of inclination of beam relative to the surface of the specimen decreases and thus interaction volume will be smaller at the same time it will be asymmetric. And at the higher tilt angle there will be reduced depth, depth of interaction volume. So, we have maximum interaction volume at a 0 degree that means without tilt and if we keep on tilting our interaction volume will decrease this is the influence of the tilt on the uh, specimen. Later stage we will see how the signal generation can also be different with tilt. So, here the electron beam is interacting on the specimen and producing us the secondary electrons and backscattered electrons which on which we are more interested in. As you see the secondary electrons one is coming from the region where the incident beam is falling on the sample or interacting with the sample. So, the area from the area and from the area is just little larger than the uh, the beam size secondary electrons one is coming and from the nearby region we have backscattered electrons are coming and also SC 2 is coming we will discuss more about SC 1 SC 2. Here the secondary electrons are defined as the electrons secondary electrons are defined as the electrons which have an energy less than 50 electron volt secondary electrons. 
which have a energy of less than 50 electron volt energy is less than 50 electron volt. So, the any electrons which is coming out of the sample of energy less than 50 electron volts we term that secondary electron coefficients and the number of secondary electrons uh, we give as a symbol uh, del, del is the secondary electrons coefficient SC electron coefficient. So, del we designate with secondary electron coefficient that is the number of secondary electrons generating from the specimen. Similarly, we have uh, backscattered electron, backscattered electron which have energy, they have energy greater than 50 electron volt and we uh, designate with a, a symbol eta for backscattered electron coefficient, backscattered electrons coefficient. So, as we see uh, the yield of secondary electrons and backscattered electrons will changes by, uh, by a, a large factors when the parameters of the electron microscopy changes or the materials it changes, changed all these things will play important roles for the yield of secondary electrons and backscattered electrons. So, here is the energy distribution of electrons emitted from a specimen as you see here uh, in the left side diagram the 3 is SC secondary electrons which have a energy uh, less than 50 electron volt particularly 90 percent of the secondary electrons, 90 percent of the secondary electrons have energy less than 10 electron volt mostly 2 to 10 electron volt and rest of the electrons which emerged from the sample or specimen are backscattered electrons which have a energy greater than 50 electron volt and their distribution is shown in the graph in the left side. In the right side we have secondary electron distributions uh, which have, as you see maximum of the secondary electrons is coming with energy range of here around uh, 2 to 5 electron volt these are the secondary electron. How the energy distribution occurring in case of secondary electrons in the right side this is for secondary electron and this is for secondary electrons and backscattered electrons. So, more number of uh, secondary electrons generated with energy uh, within the range of 2 to 10 electron volt. So, effect of acceleration of voltage on the yield of secondary electrons. The yield of secondary electron decreases with increase in the energy of the primary electron beam. So, therefore, for the 3D or microscopic image we actually do not need high acceleration voltage. As you see in this diagram here uh, both uh, secondary electron and backscattered electrons coefficient are added here both delta is secondary electron coefficient and eta is our backscattered electron coefficient both total that is the secondary electron backscattered electrons which contributes to the SEM imaging. So, they have uh, they have maximum in the region between E 1 and E 2 and here E one is the acceleration voltage that is normally 1 keV, 1 keV and this E 2 is normally a 4 to 5, 4 to 5 keV, keV. So, within that range between 1 keV to 4 to 5 keV, keV in kilo electron volts we have maximum generation of secondary and backscattered electrons. So, therefore, for most of the microscopic study. Mm -hmm. Uh, for morphological uh, uh, investigation or topological investigation we prefer energy, energy range between 1 kilo electron volt to 5 kilo electron volts. So, here is the range and escape depth of the secondary electrons. So, here uh, let us say uh, let me tell as we say this is uh, the specimen surface we have a interaction volume is like this, we have interaction volume like this and from the top region, from the top region we have like from the top region let us say this thickness is around let us say 1 nanometer. From the 1 nanometer from the surface mostly ozo electrons comes, ozo electrons. Below it, below it let us say it is secondary electrons.
this region forms the secondary electron region which is in the range of uh, 5 to 50 nanometer. From the surface in the depth of 5 to 50 nanometer mostly secondary electrons are generated. Then below it uh, below that this region is the region where from where we have backscattered electron, backscattered electrons comes out and from whole region we have uh, from all this region we have x rays comes, x rays come and this interaction volume size is around uh, and this interaction volume is size is around 1 to 5 micrometer. So, if the volume is concerned this volume then we can say it is uh, 1 micrometer cube or 5 micrometer cube depending upon the material to materials in uh, soft sample or polymeric sample uh, this interaction volume will be much larger as compared to the hard sample or with a high atomic number uh, materials the interaction volume size will be less. So, then I was talking about the uh, escape depth of the secondary electrons. Uh, we, uh, we have the secondary electrons which are coming close to the surface, close to the surface of the uh, that is 5 to 50 nanometer. So, secondary electrons will come that is what called escape depth. Escape depth means the secondary electrons which generated at a depth of 5 to 50 nanometer can come out. So, so it, it is generated below actually the secondary electrons are generated everywhere in the interaction volume, but the secondary electrons which are generated much below 50 nanometer from the surface they will be reabsorbed and they cannot come out of the specimen as they cannot come out of the specimen they cannot be detected by the detector. So, as you uh, see in this diagram probability of escape of the secondary electrons generated at a depth z below the surface. So, as you see as the depth z is increasing the probability of those electrons to come out of the specimen becoming less and less and that probability that probability we can write probability of secondary electrons emerging from the sample uh, p uh, will be uh, equivalent to will be equivalent to exponential exponential minus z z divided by lambda so here z is the depth z is the depth and lambda is the lambda is the mean free path mean free path of the secondary electron mean free path so probability uh, of the secondary electrons will be more when we have uh, small depth less depth in addition mean free path mean free path for uh, for the metals are normally around uh, lambda is for mean free path for metal uh, this uh, lambda is around 1 nanometer for, for insulator it is around, uh, around it can be go up to 10 nanometer for insulator insulator and this z uh, this z or the depth is approximately equal to or z maximum or escape depth maximum is approx uh, is almost 5 into lambda of the mean free path so uh, that is why this is like around uh, 5 to 50 nanometer from the 5 to 50 nano, um, nanometer depth we can have secondary electrons emerging from the sample surface and those can be detected by the detector. So, what you we see in this uh, graph that as we go deeper into the specimen the probability of the secondary electrons is kept from the surface will become lesser and lesser will decrease. So, this is uh, there are again secondary electrons are different type types of secondary electrons and their origin. So, as you see here 
uh, in the previous slide we have uh, mentioned the SC1 and SC2 here as, as you see SC1 and SC2. Secondary electrons 1 are the secondary electrons which emerge where the electron beam incident on the sample. On the other hand secondary electrons uh, 2 or SC2 are the secondary electrons which emerge a little away from the place where incident beam strikes on the specimen. So, as you see in this right side diagram electron beam is incidenting on the sample here and from the region secondary electrons are generated those are SC1 and then electron beam has a higher energy once they go inside the specimen they will do lot of interaction and there will be lot of scattering and the uh, electrons backscattered electrons which is having higher energy when they come out again they will make many um, more collision and producing more number of secondary electrons. Now, this secondary electron backscattered electrons have a relatively lower energy and low energy backscattered electrons would able to produce more number of secondary electron to SE2 uh, more number of secondary electrons because secondary electrons generation depends on the uh, acceleration voltage lower the acceleration voltage higher will be the secondary electrons generation as the electrons which is penetrated into this sample and by the process that will lose lot of energy. So, therefore, the backside electrons which is coming out of this sample could also produce a lot of secondary electrons which has loss and less energy or low energy and those are termed as SC2. Normally, the total uh, secondary electrons let us say this secondary electron gener generation we say uh, del 1 let us say number of secondary del 2 then total secondary electrons generation uh, del T is nothing but is equal to del 1 plus plus del 2 and here we multiply eta because this this del 2 del 2 is depends on the backscattered electrons coefficient this is del 2 this del 2 is depends on this backscattered electron that is eta. So, the total number of secondary electrons generated is del 1 plus del 2 into eta. So, now the uh, this del 2 is more this second electron 2 is more uh, than del 1 most cases because backscattered electrons are more efficient to generate secondary electrons more number of secondary electrons will be generated through the backscattered electrons. So, generally del 2 is more, but backscattered electrons this backscattered electron generation is also depends on the atomic number of the materials. When we have a higher atomic number of uh, atomic number uh, in the material uh, and higher atomic number atoms present in the material then more backscattered electron will generate it. On the other hand we if we have a lighter atomic number material then this backscattered electrons will be less and therefore del 2 will be less. So, del 1 is more for lower atomic number atomic number lower atomic number materials. On the other hand del 2 will be more for higher atomic number uh, materials. So, this is about secondary electrons 1 and secondary electron 2 and then as um, another things is here to important to note that backscattered electrons coming towards the incident beam towards in upward direction as you see this way backscattered electrons are coming. On the other hand secondary electrons are coming with a angle smaller angle to the specimen because they have a lower energy they do not have a much higher energy therefore, they would come at a smaller angle to the specimen as compared to the backscattered electrons. So, when a backscattered electron is coming towards the incident beam as we have objective lens uh, objective lens uh, above. So, it can strike to the objective lens and the electrons again generated from the objective lens is termed as SE3 so, that is termed as SE3. So, we have now three type of secondary electron SC1, SC2 and SC3. Now, you know so that these three type of secondary electrons and their origin from where the secondary electrons 1 and 2 are coming. So, the values of the SE1 and SE2 are not equal in general SE2 is 3 times 3 to 4 times more than SE1 suggesting that backscattered electrons are more efficient in producing SE secondary electrons. Moreover or however uh, this SE1 
SC 1 is more for low atomic number materials. So, now we see what happens when we uh, uh, change the tilt of this specimen. So, specimen tilt dependent secondary electron yield. So, as you see the secondary electrons yield is uh, increasing to a great uh, degree by in, uh, increasing the tilt. Actually, it uh, depends, uh, it follows the second function. So, like uh, we can say secondary electrons uh, uh, yield del, del is a function of theta, theta is the tilt angle is nothing but del 0 uh, sec theta, where del 0 is the uh, uh, secondary electron coefficient or secondary yield, secondary electron yield del, this is del at 0 degree tilt, 0 degree tilt. So, we, as we increase the tilt angle, we see more number of secondary electrons are generated that is what we you can see here as we are increasing the tilt. So, these secondary electrons which are generated here can easily come out because they have to pass uh, less distance. So, here escape depth so, uh, will be smaller and they could easily come out and therefore, their yield will increase if we increase the tilt angle this is happen for secondary electrons that is very important. So, every time uh, in every cases our sample will not be flat our sample can be any of the shape. So, once as you uh, once the electron beam incident on the specimen incident beam, uh, incident beam uh, strikes on the specimen at they will always be incidenting striking at a particular angle to the sample surface depending upon the curvature happens on the sample. And therefore, the electron generation second electron generator generation from different place at different angle will be different and that would produce the contrast difference brightness difference. More brightness we will see in this region where some uh, where the specimen is more tilted to the incident beam compared to here where there is no tilt. So, less number of secondary will electrons will be generated from a flat region as compared to a tilted region and that would provide us the brightness difference when we really go to collect the uh, um, images in our sample. So, then uh, going to yield of backscattered electrons which is particularly depend on the atomic number. So, here as you see in this graph when we increase the atomic number then there is a, a continuous increase in the yield of the backscattered electron and this is more at the lower atomic cases that means slope in this low atomic number region is quite high very steep compared to the slopes in the high atomic region. So, this variation also provides us the brightness difference. If I have a let us say carbon, carbon, carbon matrix on which if I have a uh, let us say platinum particle, if I have platinum particle, uh, if I have a carbon carbon matrix and then I have uh, platinum particle, platinum has higher atomic number, carbon has lower atomic number. So, therefore, more if I take uh, image of uh, back, uh, second backscatter electrons image, then what I will found, I will, I will find the platinum places will have a much much more higher brightness because more number of backscatter electrons will generate from here as compared to the carbon matrix. And then I would able to tell how the platinum particle are distributed in my carbon matrix. So, in this way I would able to tell that means I have a material where there is two different uh, uh, I, uh, in my material there is two different type of materials are present one having, having higher atomic number and other one having uh, a lower atomic number elements uh, atoms. So, then comparison of uh, this uh, this is the comparison between the secondary electron yield and backscattered electron yield as a function of atomic number. As you see here, so our uh, this is del is our secondary electron, secondary electron yield is almost uh, uh, negligible uh, that means almost uh, insensitive to the atomic number. So, by changing the atomic number secondary electrons yield almost there is no change. On the other hand, 
backscattered electron yield is changing drastically. So, that for backscattered electrons can be utilized for uh, knowing the distribution of different atoms present in the sample. Beam energy dependent backscattered electrons. Here you see there is no difference. Uh, we have atomic number difference that is for backscattered electrons yield is changing, but when this experiment, uh, experiment was done and also theoretically found that as we change the acceleration voltage from 5 kV to 49 or 50 kV, kV almost there is negligible, negligible change in the yield. So, beam energy do not depend, uh, do not contribute uh, or do not significantly affect the yield of the backscattered electrons. Specimen tilt dependence, as, you, as we see here there is little bit difference uh, as we increase the tilt indeed there is uh, backscattered electron coefficient is increases and the slope is found to be shallow in the low atomic number cases, but uh, uh, the, the, the backscattered electron coefficient is shallow at uh, smaller tilt angle, smaller tilt angle as compared to higher tilt angle uh, and at a very, very high tilt angle uh, they, they, they mean different type of uh, atoms with different atomic uh, number they, their uh, values or that means backscatter coefficient values is almost coming close to each other. The relationship between the uh, backscatter electron yield, tilt angle and Z, uh, Z is the atomic number here remember Z is the atomic number here. So, they follow the relation here uh, uh, eta is a function of theta or tilt angle is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus cos theta to the power p, where p is 9 upon root over of z. Here z is the uh, atomic number, z is atomic number. Previously, we have used a z term for escape depth. So, do not get confused here with atomic number and escape depth. Angular distribution. So, here you see how the backscatter electrons depends on the angular distribution. The angular distribution clearly shows more number of backscattered electrons are traveling back towards the incident beam. So, that is what we have also I have also told you before the backscattered electrons goes towards the primary beam that is why the name is backscattered electrons and that backscattered uh, electrons uh, number decreases as, you, as we go away from the incident beam or at a, at a higher uh, angle of phi here. So, at a shallow angle or just above the specimen we have almost uh, no uh, backscattered electrons trajectory and the relation of uh, this uh, angle from the incident beam to the yield of backscattered electrons follows the relation here. This is the relation that follows for uh, backscattered electron coefficient which is eta. Here is the lateral distribution how backscattered electrons are, are emerged from the specimen. The lateral spread of the backscattered uh, electrons uh, reduces the capability of the SCM because if the if the electrons are um, emerged from a larger area, then our resolution will decrease. Uh, so, as compared to the backscattered electrons, secondary electrons emerge from a smaller area, where then uh, smaller area, therefore they gives us higher resolution image. So, in conclusion what we have discussed today that uh, electron beam specimen interaction volume depends on the acceleration voltage, atomic number of the materials and the specimen tilt. So, three different uh, factors that primarily influence the uh, electron beam specimen interaction volume and the electrons which emerge from the specimen with energy less than 50 electron volt is termed as secondary electrons, whereas the electrons which emerge from the specimen with energy greater than 50 electron volt are termed as backscattered electrons. The escape depth of the secondary electron are lower in the range of 5 lambda and they provide much higher resolution because they escape close to the surface or near the surface. And acceleration voltage between 1 to 5 kilo electron volt yield more number of secondary electrons therefore suitable for high resolution imaging. So, this is what the importance of uh, secondary electrons and backscattered electrons in the microscopy purpose. So, more details uh, you can find in these books on SEM scanning electron microscopy. Thank you.